Hey Leo, and thank you for joining me today and welcome to this reading for 2016 December. It's been a really wonderful year and I really enjoyed getting to know a lot of you. I'm super excited to bring you this special reading featuring a general dream reading and then also a love reading for December, so I'm excited to talk about that with you. If you're wondering what incense I'm burning, I am uh, mentioning it in the About section be below. It's called Paravati. On the side, you have also uh, some um, some pictures of me shuffling the cards and pre-selecting the cards. I know some of you like to see that. So for Leo, it's a wonderful month, as it is for all of the signs. We see a lot of very fortuitous transits. Uh, here on the full moon on the 13th, we see a, a mystic rectangle, which is a really wonderful aspect to have during a full moon, really a confirmation that some good things can happen. There's several other aspects here as well, but I'll talk about that more in my uh, live vlogs and specials. The live vlogs are on every morning at 8 a.m. Pacific. Anyway, um, so let's take a look at some of the transits quickly before we do the tarot. First, we see Mercury moving into Capricorn in your sixth house. That means that your communication is going to happen very quickly. Very quickly, you guys are going to experience um, a lot of more daily communication here, there, everywhere. A lot of things that you talk about is actually talking about power structures and the power structures that you are dealing with. On the 8th, we have a Venus moving into your 7th house of partnership. She's going to be in the house of partnership with Mars for a total of 12 days or so. And so you want to really embrace your uh, opportunity to bond with your partner or prospective partner and really um, get what you want by expressing the love that is within you. Next, we see the full moon on December 13th. Here we see that mystic rectangle. This is a very supportive aspect. The full moon is happening in your 11th house of social relationships. So this is a wonderful time for you to get together and connect with friends and really have some nice people to come come up for you. If you do have some unfortunate friendships, this is a nice time to let them go in peace and just really uh, finish up that, that chapter in your life. Um, Mars moves into Pisces in your 8th house on the 19th of December. Mars in Pisces is going to do a lot of healing with the endings that you are dealing with in your life. Also, sexual contact at this time can have that opportunity to heal a lot in your life. So if you have the opportunity to connect with someone on a sexual level, then please do so and embrace that, that experience as a part of your healing journey in your sex life. The sun moves into Capricorn in your sixth house. The, after the sun moves into Capricorn, you should see a very productive and steady pace of work to really, um, to really uh, in your life in general. And so you'll see the steady pace of work and things pick up on a day-to-day -day basis. You are going to be encouraged in some way to work, work, work and apply yourself. So this is going to be a whole month of getting things done and achievement. Also on the 28th of December, we have a new moon in your sixth house. This is a wonderful time to start new projects, daily chores, exercise, diet regimens. So really get prepared for that. Maybe not the best time in order to begin because Mercury is retrograde. So if you try to start something new, you might see it wrought with a lot of problems. You might want to wait to put your plans into action until January when Mercury goes direct. And then the final aspect that we want to talk about is Uranus, which will go direct in your ninth house. This comes as a sigh of relief because when uh, Uranus goes direct, your focus and attention on bigger problems and bigger uh, things for you to mull over is going to be addressed. When Uranus goes direct, you will have that ability to, in some way, push forward with your ideas without having getting caught up or kind of getting confused as to uh, the sharpness of your mind will simply improve and you'll have the ability to uh, kind of express your thoughts clearly, concisely, and and uh, fo in a focused direction. So I'm picking also three cards from the angel 
deck. This is a very famous deck. It was published in actually 1983, so many of you, I already saw this card have peaked. I'll show you guys too here. Brotherhood and Sisterhood. Most of you guys haven't, weren't even born yet. I was, I was like two, so anyway, um, so yeah, so a very old deck, and it's a really wonderful one. Every single esoteric store in BC pretty much has a bowl of these cards available to pick through. Here is your first message, and that's from the Gaia, um, the, the Dreams of Gaia. By the way, these cards are general, but they're all kind of dream-like um, kind of um, decks. And the reason that I chose them is that so you can connect to your dreams and your wishes and bring them forward in your life. So really connect that energy and try to manifest. So here is your message. Ooh, you've got the two of waters to start, Leo. I think that things continue to heat up for you in terms of relationships. Um, in general, November, December, really wonderful for relationships and connection. Two of water is the bonding card, the bonding of two souls into one, whether you are in a relationship or not, then this is that lovey feeling that you are moving towards the right relationship for you. I'm going to do a full relationship reading in just a moment, so stay tuned for that. We'll definitely get more information on this wonderful state. This is also, two of water is also bonding with family, so if you have any family gatherings for Christmas or for other holidays, then this is a time when you really come together and really feel as one. This is the Goddess Guidance Oracle. This is like your mantra. Second time down has come through. And so now we're taking a look at your divine knowledge that can help others through your spiritual teaching. Speak your heart, speak your mind. We see her wearing a blue sapphire or maybe some type of blue jewel in a choker, right? Oh, that's the earth. <laughs> Speaking right, oh, she's wearing the, the earth as a choker right over her throat chakra, which is actually giving her clear intention and thought, supporting her and driving her to clear, speak clearly and effortlessly towards building love relationships and how help others reach love. Here is the Mary L Tarot. And so this is the star. Ooh, to uh, Leo, you might be experiencing some type of connection with an Aquarian. If not, then this is your soulmate who's coming through. Wow, really intense and uh, powerful energy coming in full of love, support, and nurturing. If this isn't your soulmate, then this is definitely serendipitous relationships and connections with others that are leading you to your destiny. You're really on point in December. This is a wonderful reading so far, just so full of love already. The next card is... So we have the three of discs. So together with the one that you love, you will be building your empire. If you don't know that person yet, we'll talk about that in the next reading, but you are already very focused on the things you must achieve on a day-to-day -day basis to achieve your dreams and make your dreams a reality. The next card is the Ten of Discs, Success and Prominence. In fact, I just read for Taurus, also a fixed sign, so I'm reading them based on their modality, and Taurus got Dana and got the Ten of Discs in those positions, so pretty uh, pretty uh, important for you to know, Leo. Maybe Leos and Tauruses are heating things up this time around, so maybe there's some type of uh, loving energy between Leos and Tauruses that's interconnecting here in this reading. Um, so the star is saying, be sure-footed. You will be uh, doing a lot of work through the month of December. This will lead to a lot of financial prominence. This is enjoying the wealth that you have accrued or the wealth of your family. This is like the Christmas dinner when everybody's sitting around a dinner feast full of, you know, all these wonderful different delicacies. So this is just, this is the best reading so far, Leo. You should be so excited. We have the Two of Water, which is the Two of Cups. Not really. This deck is a little bit different, but it is that bonding love relationship bringing life into this earth in one way or another, you know, oh, some type of life, something to nurture and cherish and uphold. And this is a part of your spiritual teaching to bring that message into the world and help others to kind of cling on to you, to allow others to, in some way, 
you know, catch your energy and, and work with the energy that you are guided by. It's almost as if you're up on a cloud and the cloud is carrying you forward in some really beautiful directions. There's a lot of connection here with family and people that you love and friends. And this is a really wonderful time for you to step into those truths for yourself. The next card is the Tarot of Dreams. So this is the Knight of Wands. So this is Leo, Sagittarius, Aries. Someone's coming in quick for you and someone has an agenda. For some of you, this is someone leaving your life, enabling you to really connect with the people that are most wor worthwhile. The Knight of Wands has a very loving heart, someone who is full of passion, a great defender of those who have been wronged, someone who fights for glory and sees through circumstances and is powerful and empowered to do what he does. He can be a little bit fickle. That's okay for Leo. Leo can handle that. And so you can jive and in some way, in some serendipitous way, you keep meeting. So this is actually together really suggesting that maybe, you know, throughout the month of December, suddenly someone keeps showing up. And it's not that they're showing up to see you. It's just you keep meeting them everywhere you go. And you need to watch out for that person. That person's important for you. If you're looking for a love relationship, this could be the one. So it's important for you to kind of keep an eye on that. Conversely, if this person seems to be disappearing on you, then just let them go because in December you will be actually moving to a higher vibration. You will be increasing your vibration and this person is leaving because they can't match that. The next card is the five of wands so not everything can be perfect you have to um, look at all the possibilities and all the things that are influencing you at the time the five of wands is really suggesting that there is quite a bit of influence and and quite a bit of influence and quite a bit of uh, kind of um, magic happening around you. There's a lot of variables for you to contend with. There's a lot of positivity at work. Like I said, the pace is really intense and especially with Pluto in your sixth house of day-to-day -day activity, the work and the sheer volume of effort that is put in on a day-to-day -day basis can be quite immense. The last card and the outcome is the Six of Cups. So there is a reconnection with someone or a connection with your loved one. This card is duplicitous. It either reminds you of the love that you once shared and helps you define your values that you are going for in life. Or conversely, this card reminds you that in some way you are uh, connecting with your loved one on a soul level basically the self-awareness that's why there's always children on the cards it reminds you that the self-awareness that you had as a child is being manifested now through your love relationships so i think that there's going to be a bit of balance leo between your personal life and your work life and i think that your work life is going to be very demanding with the amount of work and effort that you are being asked to put in. But at the same time, you have this fleeting opportunity to really have that special space with your partner. And so you will be needing to balance that out. Just remember that Venus and Mars will be in the same house in Aquarius, um, your seventh house of partnership between the 8th and the 19th. So that's not 12, 11 days for you to really embrace your relationship. So if you're structuring your time between work and play, make sure that you give yourself that time between the 8th and the 19th to be able to really bond and connect and really kind of enjoy your partner to the best of your ability. And remember, the world will really support you. The star is saying that the world is facilitating the energy to manifest. This is beautiful reading, Leo. This is probably the best one. It is the best one. The first card from the angels is gratitude. So it's through gratitude for the universe that the universe is bringing even more wonderful things into your life. You're really having that connection with not only your partner, with, but with the universe. That heartfelt gratitude, connection, and fulfillment of the things that you are wishing, the things that you are um, have been hoping for. It's no longer uh, a question of I want to achieve this or I want to have that. It's like 
Thank you, universe. Thank you for bringing this into my life. This is my reality. This is my focus. Thank you so much. It's here. It's now. And that's when you're really in the flow of manifestation. The next card is for the central pillar. And this is purification, right? So whenever we have to adjust things and, and reprioritize the things because of the new influences that are coming in, then there will be a moment of, oh shit, where am I going to put this? What am I going to do? And how is that going to apply? So you're going to have that little frazzled moment, but it's not something you can't handle. The last card for the last pillar and the last little bit of advice, sisterhood, brotherhood. So there is that connection. This can also actually be pointing to the fact that by the end of the month, your brothers and sisters will become very important to you. Of course, around the holidays is when a lot of families can come together, especially people who live far away and far apart. And so therefore you can like really connect with your brother or sister and rebond and and build that relationship again and improve on the foundation that you had uh, in some way left behind to lead your life so there's a real possibility of reconnection with family members brotherhood sisterhood can also relate to surrogate uh, family members and also cousins so really think about that broadly about how it fits in for you in your life whatever it is leo it looks like a wonderful time for you and i'm very happy for uh, the energy that you've received just can't be any more uh, lovey-dovey and wonderful now i think it's important to recognize this was a general reading of dreams and wishes and hopes and now we're going to focus on just a love reading between you and your important and your significant partner I'm going to do a special spread that I'll explain in just a little bit, but there's been requests for me to play the chime. So I'm going to do that just for a second and then we'll begin the love reading. So. All right, so why don't we just take a look at uh, these cards that I picked for you guys earlier. So here are the cards for your relationship, sorry my hair, for your relationship and for uh, your partner. And so this is uh, suitable for people who are currently in a relationship and people who are waiting to meet their twin flame, their twin soul, their next partner. And it's giving you an idea of where things are at and what things you need to work on and develop in order to achieve the love relationship that you want and you deserve. So why don't we take a look at this reading? I also pick three focus cards from three different decks. This is the universal deck oracle deck sorry universal love oracle deck it's a beautiful deck with wonderful messages so you're not the only one who got this card december is a wonderful time for reflection whether it's summer and you are in the southern hemisphere and you're sitting at the beach and kind of thinking about life and where you want to see things go or whether it's the midst of winter and you're sitting in some type of you know snowy cabin <laughs> and you're thinking about um or rainy if you're on the west coast but um, but yeah, so you're sitting somewhere and reflecting upon the decisions you've made and you're really consolidating the year that has passed and thinking about where you want to see 2017 go. This is a card from Doreen Virtue, the Romance Angels, very popular deck. We all love this deck so much. Very soon. Ooh. So clearly decide what you want so that it can come to you now. So I think as I'm doing the reading, try to put into your heart a clear direction of what you want. Is it time for, to meet your soulmate? Is this time for you to reconnect with your partner? Are you gonna, is this the time to activate the love that you share? Or are you still waiting, willing to wait a little bit or maybe even hoping to wait a little bit to adjust certain things? 
um, for yourself in your life. Ganesha is a Hindu god that is associated with removing obstacles and building success. So this is the Whispers of Ganesha Oracle. I love it so much. It's the cultivation. So in certain sense, you are cultivating a very supreme and elevated love. And I think that self-reflection, reflection on the relationship, making some hard decisions about what you want and really putting that in your heart all contribute to a positive environment all fields in terms of uh you know like built, uh, growing growing um uh, growing crops are cultivated they're they're they have to circle the fields so basically um there's um, they give time for the soil to regenerate so just like anything else you have to cultivate and nourish and take care of the things that you are given so that they can be you know, at their highest, at their highest and most powerful um, energy. So the first card is where your relationship stands as of now. Now this is a card that depicts your relationship as it is or as you are both sitting right now, whether you know each other or not yet. And so the first card is the devil. It is the master. There's a lot of structure and there are a lot of rules around the situations that you are dealing with. Um, this also represents the sign of Capricorn. So we're really on point in terms of timing. The master says that in some way you are working through letting go of some of the limitations that you have put around your heart that in some way have caged it. So you see that heart, but in a certain way, uh, the the master is holding uh, the cage within himself and so it's up to him to release and open up that heart and let it shine forward so both you and your partner whether you know them or not are in some way imposing upon yourselves some types of limitations in order to actualize the love that you are being given from the first reading and from here it's up to you to decide when you are going to move forward what kind of relationship do you want what kind of connection what do you want from your partner what are you willing to give you have to make a clear decision of that in your heart now so you have that time in December you have the ability to nurture your heart and embrace those possibilities these two cards represent your highest ideals for the relationship these are yours these are your partners let's take a look at what you're looking for in the relationship so you're looking for the five of swords. So you're looking for a clear and decisive decision on how to manifest the energy. You're really looking uh, to make a final um, decision and really set some things in line for the things that you are trying to achieve. You don't want things to be black and white. You just want to make the decision and move forward. I don't think you have a lot of patience and this is probably a result of all the structure that you have been dealing with for such a long time. I think that you're willing to win or lose in order to build the good relationship and therefore you are in a positive position to be able to in some way um, inflict growth and positive um inflict gr growth and positive change in your life you're willing to step back for your partner and you're willing to be wrong for your partner and that's a really wonderful thing in a relationship the second thing you're really looking for is to observe this is the hanged man now this is a wonderful card leo it's been coming up a lot and i've been actually growing a lot by reading it for you guys um, through the different signs i think that you yourself are looking for a cathartic moment a spiritual moment that will give you insights on how to liberate yourself i think that what you're really looking to do is really uh, you feel like you're in a safe space you feel like this is the time to move forward in love and at the same time you recognize that there are things about you that are in some way holding you back in life or things that you want to transcend and so therefore you're willing to make put in the effort in order to achieve those things in order to move in directions that are helpful and positive for you the next message is for your partner. Now, if you don't know your partner, then take these cards as information on how to facilitate the things that they desire most in a relationship with you. The first message here is 
the two to listen. So this is the high priestess. Your partner wants to be psychic. Your partner wants to have all the insight and intuition and foreknowledge. I think that in you they seek a, a person with whom they can have this great insight and intuition. And I think that they're seeking you to be a complement to that journey in their life. So right now they're very focused on at really kind of gaining deeper knowledge and ga gaining deeper truth. They're interested thing in things like clairvoyance, clairaudience, and um, omniscient, uh, omniscience, uh, just really trying to learn as much as possible about the world. And maybe that's their answer to this card right now. So as they feel in a certain way bound by the limitations of their own character and ego, they want to understand. So they're really looking beyond just rational thought to try to think about what it, what it is that is holding them back and really analyze things from a, a, a metaphysical level. The next card about what your partner wants is the Four of Swords. So I think that your partner is looking for a break. I think that it appears to me as though you are the stronger partner at this time. Whether you know your partner or not, it seems to me, and I have the sense that your partner has been through quite a bit, and I think that they are in some way feeling very depleted, exhausted, run through the water, or, you know, just, just tired and burnt out. So I think that your partner needs a lot of rest. Whether you know your partner or not, you can facilitate the facilitate that for them by trying to channel with them by connecting with them through meditation and also send loving energy saying please sleep please rest please nourish your, nourish yourself so that we can be together in a healthful way soon if you're not together right now if you're together right now then you can simply make their make the bed for them and try to um, encourage them to get really comfortable and hibernate a little bit and allow them to have some rest if you're with them right now you can serve them some nice tea that stimulates dreams or something like that and you can facilitate and give that to them and that will really fulfill them they'll know that you really love and care about them and this is the cultivation part of your journey with them at this time you can cultivate that with them whether you know it or not you both are coming from a place that is repressive in a certain way with a lot of maybe de-emphasizing of emotions needs and especially um, a break in terms of uh, mental work. I think that there's quite a bit of hard mental work you have been experiencing and your partner as well, and you're just done with it. You're, you've been working really hard intellectually and with thoughts and ideas, and this is a time to pause. This is for both of you, and I think your partner needs it more than you do, so be aware of that. So if you're feeling really tired, your partner's feeling more tired than you. Okay, so let's take a look at what the next stage of your relationship is for you. Six of Cups. And you are in a position to give love to your partner in such a way. The Six of Cups came up before. This is simply love. Maybe for you, you're seeking out to build your family, to have children, to spread your knowledge, to grow and adapt. You're really willing and able to be generous. I don't think that this limited state of the um, of the master has in any way impeded your ability to open up and burst forward. I think this card speaks to me in this context quite a lot. It's saying that you are, despite it all, you're making the decision. I, I know who I am. I know what I want. Leo has that ability to lead through the heart. The Six of Cups is associated with the heart chakra. So you're really willing and able to open that up. Leo, this is what your partner's next step is. And here we have leadership and power. So if they're being a little bit uh, heavy handed in the relationship in some way, if they want to take the lead, let them be the be the receiver of that energy, allow them to set the tone, whatever that may be. Try to realize that they're working through some pretty serious feelings and emotions at this time, and you can facilitate that feeling and emotion by allowing them to have their day. So with me and my partner, what we would do when we first met a lot was, here's your day, so you can 
you can do whatever you want. And when it was my turn to have my day, I would be like, oh, okay, I can do whatever I want. And that's that was a really nice game that we played for a long time together. And it was a really nice um, kind of allotment of energy. So let your partner have them their day. It will help them relax. It will help them um, kind of connect to the energies that they are exploring. And for you, the message, the highest manifestation of your love right now is self-sacrifice and the ability to win or lose. So for you, it's not going to take too much to to say, okay, it's all about you. Here, honey, you can do this. Whether you know them or not, allow that kind of energy to permeate and will allow them to reach out to you. If you're just meeting your partner now, then, you know, your partner will in some way allow them to make that gesture towards you. I think that a lot of uh, your relationship right now has to do with you facilitating their growth because they are the weaker partner at this time and that can fluctuate in a later point in time you may feel like you need the help and they will remember the gifts that you have given to them by being compassionate these are the next advice cards that you get for your relationship the first one is the star so we have the star come up a couple times this is the act to heal this is the sign of Aquarius and so again the message of this Aquarian understanding I'm here in the now I'm here present serendipity is around me things are happening in a uh, in a kind of connected way interconnected between all the different possibilities and I'm moving forward also this is a the next step in the game if you haven't met your partner this this is a strong suggestion that your partner will reach out to you and make that connection. So allow that you've allowed a certain amount of room to breathe and now you're welcoming that energy into your life. And regardless, don't be worried about how you're going to react. I think you should try to cultivate it, cultivate it, but at the same time, it's going to happen regardless. So you can relax and you can really focus on what things matter to you the most. The next card is the solar plexus. I love this for Leo. Leos, you guys get this unlike anyone else. The solar plexus focuses on, uh, you know, your ego and your drive. So I think that when the when the switch goes on, then you'll be ready to go. This is a suggesting that over the next little amount of time you putting in effort into your relationship in a practical way by letting your feelings be known by letting your connection be known will really facilitate that uh, relationship and help it grow so it's almost like you're determined and you're making that decision and you're moving forward with what you desire and what you want really beautiful energy this is what your partner needs to do in the next little while so here's some advice. And for you, if you know your partner or not, this informs you on how to support them and facilitate that energy for them. The first message is to trust. So they have to just step in the flow of new beginnings. This is a, a pretty intimidating step for people. So be, be, trust, uh, be mindful and assured that the direction that they are going in is one that is maybe scary, but once they move into this space, they'll be so excited. In fact, this connection is saying almost to me like there's going to be some honeymoon period and some, some go time very quickly, probably around the full moon because we have that mystical rectangle and can really activate a lot of powerful energy around you and you can just fall into the flow of love around you in your life. The second message is refusing to see the two of swords. Now this this is different than the way that I look at the two of swords, but refusing to see this um, is there's a dawn and they are coming into some type of awareness. You have to be mindful of the fact that they may not be prepared or able to see the full magnificence that you are perceiving. So it's important for you to kind of in some way bite your tongue to hold yourself back before you throw your everything into the situation you're going to get it you're going to you're going to get there with them it's just right now they are still exhausted and the first pangs of them feeling better may not 
facilitate them taking a whole lot of stuff on. They still need to rest. You seem to have a ton of energy, Leo, and I think that you need to cultivate that for within yourself. So if your partner is only uh, th there with you energetically a part time, then maybe use the rest of the time to really feed your soul, feed yourself so that you can grow and pull them up when they are ready. The outcome card for December in love is the Ace of Cups, which is love abounds. They will understand and you will make that soul connection. If you don't meet them yet by the end of the month, then really focus on meditations. I have a beautiful Tantra meditation on my meditation channel that talks about connecting love and building love. So I think that that connection will happen if you're just patient and willing to really reflect upon things and really understand what they need and move, tread softly. And I think Leos are so good at understanding other people's hearts, other people's motivations and feelings. And I think that you're no different in this situation. You're being asked to be so Leo, nurturing, caring, cultivating, taking care of your partner's needs, whether you know them or not. There is that psychic connection. I feel this card. This is one of my f favorite high priestess cards ever. And I feel there is this psychic connection to your loved one who is communicating those messages to you clearly and through this reading. So I hope you enjoy this reading. You guys, thank you so much for a wonderful 2016. Leos are amazing. I love you guys so much. And so you are such an important part of my life. I'm in a big part, Leo, astrologically as well. I hope that you guys have a wonderful holiday season. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Please give me a thumbs up for this video. It really helps my videos grow. Thank you so much for everything. I love you guys so much. Big love for Leo and I will talk to you. Oh, that's a janky little heart. Big love for Leo and I'll talk to you guys in 2017. Take care. Bye and help others to kind of cling on to you to allow others to in some way you know catch your energy and and work with the energy that you are guided by it's almost as if you're up on a cloud and the cloud is carrying you forward in some really beautiful directions there's a lot of connection here with family and people that you love and friends and this is a really wonderful time for you to step into those truths for yourself the next card is the Tarot of Dreams. So this is the Knight of Wands. So this is Leo, Sagittarius, Aries. Someone's coming in quick for you and someone has an agenda. For some of you, this is someone leaving your life, enabling you to really connect with the people that are most wor worthwhile. The Knight of Wands has a very loving heart, someone who is full of passion, a great defender of those who have been wronged, someone who fights for glory and sees through circumstances and is powerful and empowered to do what he does. He can be a little bit fickle. That's okay for Leo. Leo can handle that. And so you can jive and in some way, in some serendipitous way, you keep meeting. So this is actually together really suggesting that maybe, you know, throughout the month of December, suddenly someone keeps showing up. And it's not that they're showing up to see you, it's just you keep meeting them everywhere you go. And you need to watch out for that person. That person's important for you. If you're looking for a love relationship, this could be the one. So it's important for you to kind of keep an eye on that. Conversely, if this person seems to be disappearing on you, then just let them go because in December you will be actually moving to a higher vibration. You will be increasing your vibration and this person is leaving because they can't match that. The next card is the five of wands. So not everything can be perfect. You have to um, look at all the possibilities and all the things that are influencing you at the time. The five of wands is really suggesting that there is quite a bit of influence and, and quite a bit of influence and quite a bit of uh, kind of um, magic happening around you. There's a lot of variables for you to contend with. There's a lot of positivity at work. Like I said,
Hey Leo, and thank you for joining me today, and welcome to this reading for 2016 December. It's been a really wonderful year, and I really enjoyed getting to know a lot of you. I'm super excited to bring you this special reading featuring a general dream reading and then also a love reading for December, so I'm excited to talk about that with you. If you're wondering what incense I'm burning, I am uh, mentioning it in the About section be below. It's called Paravati. On the side, you have also uh, some um, some pictures of me shuffling the cards and pre-selecting the cards. I know some of you like to see that. So for Leo, it's a wonderful month, as is for all of the signs. We see a lot of very fortuitous transits. Uh, here on the full moon on the 13th, we see a, a mystic rectangle, which is a really wonderful aspect to have during a full moon, really a confirmation that some good things can happen. There's several other aspects here as well, but I'll talk about that more in my uh, live vlogs and specials. The live vlogs are on every morning at 8 a.m. Pacific. Anyway, um, so let's take a look at some of the transits quickly before we do the tarot. First, we see Mercury moving into Capricorn in your sixth house. That means that your communication is going to happen very quickly. Very quickly, you guys are going to experience um, a lot of more daily communication here, there, everywhere. A lot of things that you talk about is actually talking about power structures and the power structures that you are dealing with. On the 8th, we have a Venus moving into your 7th house of partnership. She's going to be in the house of partnership with Mars for a total of 12 days or so. And so you want to really embrace your uh, opportunity to bond with your partner or prospective partner and really uh, get what you want by expressing the love that is within you. Next, we see the full moon on December 13th. Here we see that mystic rectangle. This is a very supportive aspect. The full moon is happening in your 11th house of social relationships. So this is a wonderful time for you to get together and connect with friends and really have some nice people to come come up for you. If you do have some unfortunate friendships, this is a nice time to let them go in peace and just really uh, finish up that, that chapter in your life. Um, Mars moves into Pisces in your 8th house on the 19th of December. Mars in Pisces is going to do a lot of healing with the endings that you are dealing with in your life. Also, sexual contact at this time can have that opportunity to heal a lot in your life. So if you have the opportunity to connect with someone on a sexual level, then please do so and embrace that, that experience as a part of your healing journey in your sex life. The sun moves into Capricorn in your sixth house. The, after the sun moves into Capricorn, you should see a very productive and steady pace of work to really, um, to really, uh, in your life in general. And so you'll see the steady pace of work and things pick up on a day to day basis. You are going to be encouraged in some way to work, work, work and apply yourself. So this is going to be a whole month of getting things done and achievement. Also on the 28th of December, we have a new moon in your sixth house. This is a wonderful time to start new projects, daily chores, exercise, diet regimens. So really get prepared for that. Maybe not the best time in order to begin because Mercury is retrograde. So if you try to start something new, you might see it wrought with a lot of problems. You might want to wait to put your plans into action until January when Mercury goes direct. And then the final aspect that we want to talk about is Uranus, which will go direct in your ninth house. This comes as a sigh of relief because when uh, Uranus goes direct, your focus and attention on bigger problems and bigger uh, things for you to mull over is going to be addressed. When Uranus goes direct, you will have that ability to, in some way, push forward with your ideas without having getting caught up or kind of getting confused as to uh, the sharpness of your mind will simply improve and you'll have the ability to uh, kind of express your thoughts clearly, concisely, and and uh, fo in a focused direction. So I'm picking also three cards from the angel 
deck. This is a very famous deck. It was published in actually 1983. So many of you, I already saw this card that peaked. I'll show you guys too here. Brotherhood and Sisterhood. Most of you guys haven't, weren't even born yet. I was, I was like two. So anyway, um, so yeah, so a very old deck and it's a really wonderful one. Every single esoteric store in BC pretty much has a bowl of these cards available to pick through. Here is your first message, and that's from the Gaia, um, the, the Dreams of Gaia. By the way, these cards are general, but they're all kind of dream-like um, kind of um, decks. And the reason that I chose them is that so you can connect to your dreams and your wishes and bring them forward in your life. So really connect that energy and try to manifest. So here is your message. Ooh, you've got the two of waters to start, Leo. I think that things continue to heat up for you in terms of relationships. Um, in general, November, December, really wonderful for relationships and connection. Two of water is the bonding card, the bonding of two souls into one, whether you are in a relationship or not, then this is that lovey feeling that you are moving towards the right relationship for you. I'm going to do a full relationship reading in just a moment. So stay tuned for that. We'll definitely get more information on this wonderful state. This is also two of water is also bonding with family. So if you have any family gatherings for Christmas or for other holidays, then this is a time when you really come together and really feel as one. This is the Goddess Guidance Oracle. This is like your mantra. Second time Dan has come through. And so now we're taking a look at your divine knowledge that can help others through your spiritual teaching. Speak your heart, speak your mind. We see her wearing a blue sapphire or maybe some type of blue jewel in a choker, right? Oh, that's the earth. <laughs> Speaking right, oh, she's wearing the, the earth as a choker right over her throat chakra, which is actually giving her clear intention and thought, supporting her and driving her to clear, speak clearly and effortlessly towards building love relationships and have, help others reach love. Here is the Mary L Tarot. And so this is the star. Ooh, to uh, Leo, you might be experiencing some type of connection with an Aquarian. If not, then this is your soulmate who's coming through. Wow, really intense and uh, powerful energy coming in full of love, support, and nurturing. If this isn't your soulmate, then this is definitely serendipitous relationships and connections with others that are leading you to your destiny. You're really on point in December. This is a wonderful reading so far, just so full of love already. The next card is, so we have the three of discs. So together with the one that you love, you will be building your empire. If you don't know that person yet, we'll talk about that in the next reading, but you are already very focused on the things you must achieve on a day-to-day -day basis to achieve your dreams and make your dreams a reality. The next card is the Ten of Discs, Success and Prominence. In fact, I just read for Taurus, also a fixed sign, so I'm reading them based on their modality. And Taurus got Dana and got the Ten of Discs in those positions. So pretty uh, pretty uh, important for you to know, Leo. Maybe Leos and Tauruses are heating things up this time around, so maybe there's some type of uh, loving energy between Leos and Tauruses that's interconnecting here in this reading. Um, so the star is saying be sure-footed. You will be uh, doing a lot of work through the month of December. This will lead to a lot of financial prominence. This is enjoying the wealth that you have accrued or the wealth of your family. This is like the Christmas dinner when everybody's sitting around a dinner feast full of, you know, all these wonderful different delicacies. So this is just, this is the best reading so far, Leo. You should be so excited. We have the Two of Water, which is the Two of Cups. Not really. This deck is a little bit different, but it is that bonding love relationship, bringing life into this earth in one way or another, you know, some type of life, something to nurture and cherish and uphold. And this is a part of your spiritual teaching to bring that message into the world 